Right. Hello everyone. Uh, this is Keith from Investment Moves. Uh, welcome to another of my YouTube sharing on uh, personal finance and and investing stuff uh, more towards uh, financial independence. And today's topic, I want, like, want to answer specifically one of my readers' questions, but I think some of y'all would, would appreciate this because you're always looking for uh, uh, different different perspective into how to look at spending or I prefer to call it advanced income allocation because because we all earn an income and then we all want to learn to uh, allocate our income in the most optimal manner and sometimes uh, it's not just about it's not just about spending it's it's, it's more it, it, you want to include just include the savings portion as well as 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 consider the spending portion now let's go into the actual i have one reader uh kind, kind of a long time reader and then he asked these questions in one of my telegram group so he he actually wanted to find out like does anyone have a good uh good guidelines with regards to savings rates right what's a good savings and investment percentage guide to share and the only one that he can come across is this 50 30 20 rules which is quite uh if you if you google right most likely you'll hit something like that and i think we'll go into this one uh, at, at at the last section of, of of this presentation and to add to more context on the right side he's actually a person that is i think 40 years old he's really looking for guidelines what would be a good uh, rate for savings and, and, and about investments. And this is what he has come across. Like someone say that uh, it, it makes sense to actually save one third and one third to give the employer the middle finger. Basically, it's like one third to invest so for your financial independence. And I suppose the other one third is actually to spend. Uh, the 50, 30, 20 rules, some research articles, and someone shared that it's good to keep 10% for holidays. And while he agrees that everyone is actually different, he's actually looking for guidelines. Now, my perspective about rules that is like, if you Google and then you get this kind of like 50, 30, 20 rules, right? I think it's too, too rigid. And if you don't understand the ideas behind it, right? And you pigeonhole your, your, yourself to, to it, right? Then I think it might not, in the long term, right, it might not, uh, uh, it might not uh, serve serve the best advice. And if we take a step back, right, the deeper question that this reader is facing, and probably some of you are thinking of, is that you wish to do the right thing. Like you you earn this income, you want to make sure that. Uh, you you are deploy, deploying it optimally, but yet at the same time you want to uh, you you want to spend and enjoy life as well lah. But what is a good balance? And and if you you don't have a very clear idea about this, you want to make sure that like you roughly do the right things and. And because of that, you're hunting for these kind of guidelines, like whether thirty percent savings rate is good enough, or, or that you rely on this fifty, thirty, twenty rules. And today, right, I'm gonna give you some of my how I frame about looking at this income and savings. And a large part of it is uh, is more in the context of you are saving for a a. a a longer term goal such as I think children's education and, and retirement or financial in the independence. So uh, this works for me and I hopefully I think some of your it, it will work for for for, for some 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 of your so the first one is that we know that I think a lot a lot of time what is the relationship between your spending and say say savings. So we have a a, a take home pay most take home salary most of the time like this take home salary is actually split within these two portions one portion is that you're saving a certain portion of it and uh and the other portion you're 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 you're, you're saving it so but what's the relationship between your savings and your spending with within the context if let's say you have a such a large goal such as like financial independence if you spend more of your money right 
what happens is that it's, it's, it's kind of a double whammy. You spend more, more, most of your money, right? You come to someone who knows how to plan for this kind of thing. And Keith is going to tell you, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, you, the more you spend, right, the larger this, this uh, portfolio that you need, right, next time for your financial independence. This is the way. This this is the way it is. Like some of our uh, uh, clients or prospect back in the wealth advisory firm that I work work, work with, their their income uh, requirement sometimes is about ten ten thousand a month, twenty thousand a month. Naturally, it works out to be millions of of dollars that that is needed. And if you look at Keith, like he's probably okay with let's say less than two two thousand dollars, and that means that. Uh, uh, it's it's a much smaller amount, uh, amount. Okay, but what happens is that if your spending is quite large, right, your savings is lesser, and because your savings is lesser, right, you have a problem actually accumulating to this. So that's why I call this the double whammy. So take note of this relationship. Uh, of course, if let's say you have a high savings rate, right, and your spending is small, right. The, this equation works out better. Now we can we can illustrate this in terms of financial independence in this table on the right. I have this one on my on my blog for a while already, right? And it shows the number of years that roughly you need to accumulate towards your financial independence. Now let me teach you how to actually read this. On the y-axis or this uh, vertical axis, you can see your savings rate. This means that it's like how much your actually savings out of, let's say your take-home income. And if it's 5%, it means that you're saving 5%. Okay? If you're saving 5%, 5% right, we're taking it that the other 95%, you're spending it. So over here, let's say if it's 65%, right, you're actually spending the other 35% of it. And you can see that this is the relationship. It, it links to this relationship over here. Now, on the horizontal axis, right, it's the rate of return of your wealth machine or in, 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 a, in a simple terms, right, it's your rate of return of your portfolio investments. Depending on how you invest your shrewdness, your rate of return can be 1% or 20%. Okay, there's a whole range of returns. Now, as you can see, right, if let's say your savings rate is low, like 5 to 15%, the difference over here it shows like the number of years that you need to to, to accumulate towards your financial independence. If the rate of re return is low and then your savings rate is low, right? It takes like about eighty eight years or hundred and seventy five years. Basically, you cannot retire lah. And but if let's say your returns is very very high over the period, right? Then it's like about twenty five to eighteen years. There is a possibility that let's say a 25 years old can retire at nearly about 45 years old. Now, if your savings rate goes higher and higher, let's say it's at 50%, if your rate of return is like about 1%, right? The, the time it takes like about 22 years. So for 25 years old, it will be about 47 years old. But if your rate of return is higher, let's say 8%, right? It's about 14 years. And what you notice is that regardless of your rate of return, right, it is a smaller range. It's like between 22 years to nine, about 10 years. The difference is like about 10 years of a difference. Versus let's say if it's 10%, the difference is between 21 years and about 120 years. Big difference here. Now, if your savings rate is really high, like 80%, right, you can see the difference is between 4.45 years and, and, and six years, it's, it's around this. Basically, it means that your rate of return right, doesn't matter so much because you are saving so much. Your savings is actually push, push, pushing your financial independence so much. So this is something to bear in mind, the relationship between your, your, your savings and, and spending. Okay. Now let's look at it frame in an, another way. This is something that I come across. I think it makes a lot of sense. Still, we have this take-home pay, right? And this framing of uh, uh, how, how you allocate resources is between whether you're spending today, uh, today or in the past or in the future. So, so, so our take-home pay, we can actually divide into, let's say, our past spending, 
our spending today as well as our future spending. So our past spending is like, like uh, what we're doing right now, our take-home pay is that we're servicing uh, what we have spent in the past. And a very prevalent way that that this will happen is that we we have a lot of debts or we, 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 we spend using our credit cards and and we're paying it off today. So so imagine like, like about three, let's say three three weeks ago, right? I, I wanted to buy something and and I'm using a credit card to, to actually pay pay for it. I don't have the money then. So but today right when it comes due right uh, I have to pay pay for it. So this is the portion that I'm paying for what I spent in the past. And and this is what I spent today. Lah. Like we can say like within the past past one month, this is it. Now the other portion is that we plan for what we want to spend in the future. And these are these are like like there are some things that we had in mind or, or some of y'all don't have in mind that you need to actually spend in the future. And if you don't have any idea what you want to spend in the future, then of course the rest of it is that you spend you spend it today. Lah. So past spending right is basically debt servicing. Okay? That is quite straightforward. Future spending right is it translates to savings and investments. And whenever you look at your savings and in investments, right? These you can you can frame them differently in that you're actually preparing for some future spending. And some of the common ones is children's education. You definitely it's it's something important to you that you want to spend in the in the in the future and then you're planning for, for it. Then of course the other ones is actually financial independence. You want to make sure that uh, in the future, when let's say you stop work already or you cannot work already, you have enough money to spend. So I thought this framing is quite interesting in that if let's say the the question is whether have can can you think of anything that you want to spend in the future? Some people are less experienced, right? And then they didn't think think further. If you really don't have anything future future things to spend in the future, then of course you, you, you spend today and then you pay pay off your past spending. Lah. But I'm going to tell you this, most likely for mo, mo, most of us, we have something that we wish to spend in the future. Even at your emergency emergency funds, right, it's a future spending. It's just that you do not know when you're going to spend it, but likely case, based on your experience, uh, how you live, live life, you know that some emergency is will will come up. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. This is how I look at uh, income allocation itself. And it comes from, uh, it comes from a, a, a financial concept. Uh, if, you, if you are into stock investing, right, there is this thing called free cash flow. Free cash flow is, in Warren Buffett's term, is, their, is, is, is his own. Oh, owners or, 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 or share, shareholders earnings basically it's the earnings right that that uh that that the company have right after paying paying off all the uh, cost of goods like 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 the units of goods to actually produce some of our operating expenses as well as some of the maintenance expenses so the this free cash flow is free for uh, the company to deploy on a personal level, right, we can also uh, look at ourselves as operating as a bis business. So say, for example, we have this take-home take pay over here. We keep our, we, the way we, we, we separate our expenses into like our most essential and basic spending. So the, this is like how you will operate for yourself or your families, right, on the most uh, base, based on the most stand, standard level without a lot of extravagant things. Now, what is actually... So this would probably be things like your food and groceries for living, not... Uh, not we, we, we say that there's, there's two things like eat to live or live to eat. This one is eat to live. These are your eat to live money, not your live, live to eat one. Transport, utilities, your basic home maintenance and... and, and um, enough 
money set aside for medical needs. So you're actually this one will be some of the money you that you set aside for for home 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 maintenance. What is actually left over is a large portion of this uh, thing called the free cash flow, and and this is where 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 you test your um, income allocation or of your capital allocation skills because this amount of money you can use it for a lot of different purpose depending on how you want to live your life okay um, you can always use this free cash flow for higher grade living spending so this one will be your portion of uh, uh, live to eat the like live to eat let's say you want to eat the ting tai fong you want to go to this restaurant and all that you want to this is this is what is important to you you want to spend more of your money here so it be it okay you can spend your free 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 cash flow here or you could actually like uh, kids are important to you right uh, and then you want to uh, send your kids to a lot of enrichment things or or, or that uh, send them like like uh, whatever that they want you provide more more for them this is above like 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 the the usual food that you give them okay you can al also invest your take this money and then invest in your human capital which means that you you go for some uh, further education like master degree and that 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 you invest in yourself lah. and the reward might be that future your future earnings is actually higher so this is a bit like uh, same as companies trying to uh, reinvest their money into more factories to actually produce more goods and services in the future and you can also pay off more of your debt you can take this money and then uh, speed up your paying off your mo mortgage if let's say you are more averse to that and of course like you can save for future goals such as your financial independence all those sort of things now i like this framing because uh it like i am not gonna tell you right that what is what is a right savings rate but but in this sense right um I felt that this thing, right? Everyone have this baseline thing that they would definitely need need to spend on. But different people, right? They they value different things. Do they value their kids more? Do you, do they value things like financial independence more? Do they are more are, are they more re re reserved that they prefer to actually quickly pay off their mortgage? Different people, uh, look at things differently. And if you look at it this way, whichever things, right, I think you live and die by your decisions, okay? You can spend on your kids and higher grade living more. But, 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 but that will mean that like you, you, you don't reinvest into yourself and, 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 and ensure that your future spending, right, is actually secured. That's, that's, you, you have to live, you have to you have to live with that and in in this way right it also gives you a potential when it comes to financial independence right that that this is a large amount right that you can actually potentially save for for your financial independence if you frame it this way you can this is why like some people it, it may, there, there's certain justification why why some of the savings rate can go up to 60 or 70 percent of let's say they are take take home pay if let's say they they earn an above average income because they sacrifice uh, they sacrifice their higher grade living they probably sacrifice some of the things that that they provide for the kids itself okay so yeah okay so the the next one is right to me like what what a lot of people didn't realize is that actually you can for each of the your spending right the the items that you want to spend on right there are different grades to great grades to things if we talk about our food like the basic the 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 food and groceries you, you can separate it into basic and higher grade what what's a good 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 example even if let's say you go to a supermarket right there is the cheaper ones the the the, the ntuc uh fair price one but there's also the morrison's one those those from those from all overseas different grades right different price but if let's say you're more of eating out right your the basic one might be eating at kopitiam whereas the the 
the higher grade one would be eating at restaurants that cost $15 and, and $17. Now, a lot of us, we lump these, ex- these together and call it food and groceries. And when we, when we lump them together, we tend to, to say, okay, if we want to plan for our financial independence, uh, we look at, okay, our food and grocery spending is like $2,000. But if you ask yourself, right, actually inside you're thinking hey, some of these things are good to have. Lah. But but that's what you tell, let's say, Keith, Keith if let's say Keith is actually planning for you, say my food and spending is together. Many of these things, right, entertainment, right, you can separate them into different grades, even kids, vacation and all. And what's left over is actually the, 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 sa- the savings itself. And if you break it up into different, like, two different levels, two, two different grades, right? It, 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 this framing, like, it allows you, uh, it, it gives you a lot of, like, flexibility. Like, for example, right, um, if let's say you lose your job, right, it's easy to frame that, okay, the, these are the things, right? These kids' expenses, entertainment, and food and groceries on the basic level, right? You can keep spend, you can spend this amount. But these are the things, right, that you have to consciously cut, cut down on. Uh, and 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 the only way for you to be able to determine this right is that you you have to understand that framing that these food and groceries that there there are two levels to it even entertainment there's actually two level of it to a certain extent like like even if you lose your job some of the basic entertainment like let's say Netflix and all it doesn't cost so much right I think you can still spend it if let's say you have you are financially prudent enough okay yeah and where it comes into uh, financial independence uh, planning is that uh, these spending they, they they have different characteristics now you can look at how I group them up together like these are the basic food and gro- groceries these are basic entertainment and this is uh, probably the higher grade entertainment, food, and vacation. And then you, the, the last category is actually like uh, more vacation. Uh, instead of the basic vacation, you want to go to more, more places. And this affects like, like what, what is the kind of in- income requirement that goes into your financial independence planning. So on the very basic level, these are like kind of long tenor. tenor. You're expecting that you need this kind of spending for a long period of time. They need to be inflation adjusted and and in a certain way you want to be conservative with your planning because like you want safety first or you want to make sure that you always have this kind of spending because like these are essential now this for this group right it's also a long tenor you expect that you want to like 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 uh, be able to have the opportunity to have eat good food and some en- entertainment but you can be less conservative because you are more flexible with this spending like if let's say the markets are not doing well right you will cut down cut down on this perhaps cut down to a certain floor level and we can plan plan for this differently now the more vacation one might be that if you decide to retire at 55 years old you maybe you look ideally you you want to spend you you want to travel more for the first 10 years it's a limited tenor but it's also that you're also flexible about it. Like we're open that, okay, um, if let's say I am really an unlucky person, I, I have a poor market sequence uh, sequence of return, right? Uh, I am willing to cut down. So you can see these three groups, right? The characteristics are different. And because of that, right, the income strategy will also be different. Like this one will be using a more conservative approach, low safe withdrawal rate. That means you need a larger capital. This one, you can use a percentage of your prevailing portfolio value. If let's say your portfolio is down 20%, it's a, it's a, you get a lower income, but, but it's okay because uh, this spending, the characteristic of this one is that you can be flexible. And this one, we can actually plan a, 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 a fixed lump sum, for, lump sum for this. Okay, so, so this is how you see some of how, like, like, this breaking up into grades is kind of a big big thing for me, especially for those people that is uh, planning for financial independence. Because I think that's what, what is on your mind. Uh, um, you can be flexible, uh, but but you're also not sure like how flexible you are. Like 
like I want entertainment. At least I want some entertainment. But but like where where is the demarcation between entertainment high grade and 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 ba- and basic? And if you think of it, these two level that then it's it's more like a self reflection, like like how much of each and and what what is the kind of thing. Now, lastly, right, um, let's put in the context that this for 50, 30, 20, 20 rules. I think there are four different levels of think, income allocations that, that, is, that, that is out there. The first one is uh, use your brain. Uh. Basically, like, you don't use any tools to help you. You, you sort out everything in, in, inside your brain. This one is definitely the easiest, but, but it tends to be messier in, in, in that people are ha- having problems dealing with their money, like how to allocate things is because they just rely on their brain. Okay? Now, another, I think, I find that this is quite a use, useful way is things called, I think, reverse budget. And what this means is that you can imagine this picture. Let's say your company pays you uh, every 15 of the month, right? Before you actually spend, transfer the money to actually spend, right? The first thing you do, right, is you transfer it to another account to actually um, for your investing and, and savings. This you, You'll be using this account to actually fund your insurance policy or your SDI ETF and all the payouts and dividends, right? They flow into this account. So this is a way of actually like paying yourself first, right? You invest first. You you do the right thing. La. You the and, and the right thing is uh, take care of your future spending or, or those goals that is important to you first before you spend. And I find that this one is quite quite easy for, for people to, 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 to do and I kind of actually endorse it. It's not the most optimal because um, the, like, like the, the better things is, is to rely on certain of these framings that I've gone through in the previous few slides itself. Okay? And then the next one is the 50, 30, 20 rules, uh, which is what, what, what they, they come about. 50 per- you spend 50% of your spending on needs, uh, 30% on your wants, and 20% on your savings. The challenge with this one is that what is considered needs, what is con- con- considered wants. To different people, right, these are different things. You not just have to navigate by this, what is, how within this 30%, you have to think about like what is wants and needs. And it's not so, and it's not so easy itself. To me, I think a better framing is looking at all your spending right in two different grades or, 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 or three different grades. The most, the, the, the essential ones, right, are your needs. Okay, the higher grade spending for the same groceries and food, right, are your ones. I think that makes more sense. Now, lastly, the 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 one which I I I do it since I think when I started work is this thing called envelope budgeting. It's like if I earn four thousand dollars, right, all of these dollar, dollars they have to deploy somewhere, and no, and I will have like many different virtual buckets, right, virtual buckets or virtual envelopes. I'll just divide like four thousand dollars in into them. And they, if let's say I don't spend on, on this thing called entertainment, right? It's like uh, uh, $20, $30, right? You'll just keep accumulating. Lor. You'll actually tell, it's actually an indication that it, maybe I didn't spend enough on en- entertainment. I should spend more of it. But it gives, it's quite nice because you, you keep track of, okay, um, actually my medical fund is actually growing up. Uh, it's two two hundred dollars a month, two hundred dollars a month, and if I'm not spending it, I uh, it, eventually it now nowadays it accumulates to five thousand dollars, and it shows me that hey, actually I have a lot of margin of safety. Next month, right, like next month, I'll just cut down. Okay, instead of two hundred dollars contribution, I'll reduce it to maybe ten dollars or or so. You 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 slow down until I need it, uh, anymore. So, um. You can see that actually like from from left to right, you use the least effort and then this one is the most effort. When we talk about effort is when when we talk about effort is like how much um how much effort is that how how much external things that you need to do in terms of tracking. This envelope budgeting I think is more elaborate. It, it needs more brain power. Reverse budgeting is quite simple because it's just one level above the brain, right? You just make sure that it's like at a certain time of the month, you if let's say you you want to do the right thing to actually save three thousand dollars, you just transfer three thousand dollars to this uh, uh, account itself. So it's quite easy. 
50, 30, 20, I think there is, it's, 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 it's more balanced, but uh, you probably have to figure out like what's considered at 50, 30, and, 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 and 20. So, um, of course, like in terms of which one have the most control, right? I think, I think uh, I actually put it wrongly. Uh, this one should have the most control. Uh, this one have the least control. Uh. Yeah. So hopefully uh, this helps you as, well, as, as, as much as uh, my, my, my reader in how you frame, how you look at uh, in, in income allocation. If you're able to frame some of these things in a different way, right? Uh, there's that opportunity that uh, the amount of money that you need to accumulate towards financial independence might be very, very different. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this this video. And if you like, uh, if, if, if you do, right, do like and subscribe. And, and I hope to see you in, in the next video that I, I produce. Okay?